Hello, and welcome to my new series on OpenGL shader language programming, modern OpenGL shader programming. Um, in this series, I'm going to be focusing um, more on the shader side of effects, obviously, given the, given the title. Um, and yeah, it's, it's going to be fun. We're going to do some stuff. In terms of the language, this will be in C++. The reason for that is that some of the features that I'll be using aren't well supported in the Python um, wrapper. In theory, everything in Python should be supported. And in theory, everything is, except it's not Pythonic. So for instance, uh, well, you know what? I'll get to it. OK, so I'll just I'll show you what we have at the moment. We have just a basic uh, quad with some colored corners. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this code so that we draw some sort of effect inside. We're going to generate this effect in the shader. More importantly, we're going to pass in a bunch of parameters to that, but we'll take it one step at a time. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just, um, by the way, a lot of this stuff will be based on my OpenGL in C++ series. So have a look at that if you want to see how I would set up like a project like this. But uh, yep. So what we have here is I'm going to change this information. So we have uh, X and Y and then red, green and blue. I'm just going to change this to texture coordinates. So we'll go S and T and I'm just going to go. OK, so negative X should be the left side, positive X should be the right side. Okay, just go ahead and code this up. And this should be symmetric, so it shouldn't matter too much, but I'm gonna take negative height as the top and positive height as the bottom. Okay, that's looking good. Now we'll just modify this. So the stride will be what well, we have four numbers per vertex. So four floats. Uh, this attribute number one will have two numbers in it and it's offset. Okay, that's looking good. Okay, I'm just gonna modify the shader. That's looking good. So we'll take in this information and we'll pass along the texture coordinate. Now the texture coordinate, we're not gonna be sampling from textures. We're just gonna use this as a quick sort of indication of where we are on the image. Okay, so jump in and modify the fragment shader. Okay, so here we have it. We take these things in, uh, we get the DX and DY, which is the displacement of the fragment from the center, right? So if you subtract, subtract? Yeah, subtract 0 0.5 from each of these, then 0 0.5, 0 0.5 will become the center of the quad. And then this will be fanning out from the center. All right, so then we get the distance, which is Pythagoras' theorem there. And then we use that to mix these inner and outer colors together. Now, all of this, these parameters have been bundled together in a uniform block, okay? Um, so it's very, very, um, what would I say? Very common to, to have something like this, and then we'll go like what, um, disk dot inner color, disk dot outer color. Um, but at the moment, I'm just going to keep this as an unnamed uniform block and we'll work with that. Now, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to dynamically query a lot of information about this and use that to allocate a uniform buffer object and send it over. Benefit of a uniform buffer object is um, the UBO, the uniform buffer object, is independent of the shader. So we can have this same block kind of defined in different shaders and it will work the same way, hopefully. So now we'll head over to the engine. We'll load that all in. And we'll make a function for the engine, which will, um, we'll call it configure shader. And what this will do is basically grab all the information that we need to use that uniform block and create a uniform buffer object. Okay, the first thing we need is the block index, so, right? So we have a uniform block, we want to know what index that has. I'm going to store this and go, um, yeah, we'll make that an unsigned integer. We pass in our program, which is our shader, and the, the name of it. I believe this was disk parameters. Okay, sounds good. Let's run it. Yep, good. We've got block index zero. The next thing we need is we need to get uh, the block size. And this takes our program, the block index, which we got before. the parameter name that we're looking for, that is... and a GL integer pointer. So what we'll do is we'll go back here and we'll say, okay, let's make an integer called block size, and we'll pass this in. Seems to work, okay. So now we'll print that out and check that we've got it. Okay, right, so disk parameters is block index zero and 48 bytes have been allocated on the GPU for that uniform block. Okay, let's just check that. So what do we have? We go back to our shader and uh, we have a VEC4, so four floating points. A floating point is four bytes each, so yep, there's 16 bytes there. Another 16 bytes there, so that's 32. And then a float is four bytes, so 32 plus four is 36. 36 plus four is 40 not 48, so something funky's gone on. Now I talked about this in my video on raw pointers, but basically when we have a float by itself, depending on the memory uh, alignment, it may get promoted to a double or a 64-bit or eight byte. So if it's eight bytes and we have um, a chunk of these, so 16 bytes, then another 16, and then this one gets promoted, so another eight, and then another eight to give 48 in total. But ultimately that is kind of out of our hands, the memory alignment and layout that the program is using, which obviously is why we're querying it. Okay, so we've got the block size. Um, the next thing we need is for each of these attributes inside, whoops, each of these attributes inside the block, we need to get um, the index that they have inside the block, because it might not necessarily be zero, one, two, three. It might be different. And then we need to get the memory offsets that they have within the block. So let's go ahead and do that.
Alrighty, so um, also now from the block size um, variable, we know how many bytes to allocate in our like memory chunk that we're going to send over to the um, to the uniform block. Um, so the next point, oh, so allocate that memory. Then in here, we're going to send that memory over. Then we're going to free it on our device. Okay, so then what we do is this is the list of attributes that we're going to query from inside that uniform block and we want to get their indices so we create an array there so what we do is we call this function this function populates the set of indices with um, the corresponding indices for these names and I'm uh, <laughs> Just really restating what the code does. So we run this and see this is a little bit different, right? So inner color has index zero, outer color has index two. So it is not necessarily going zero, one, two, three. Like I said, we do not have a lot of control about, do not have a lot of control over how this stuff has been allocated. That's fine. Okay, so the, the point of this is we don't really have any guarantees about how the underlying memory has been allocated, which is why we need to query it. So for each of these indices, we're going to say, what is the memory offset in bytes from the beginning? Because we're not tightly packed and we don't know how it's been arranged. So we can run this. Okay. And actually, this is interesting. So what do we have? Inner color starts at the beginning of the buffer. Outer color starts directly after inner color. Okay, then outer color will take up 16 bytes. So, okay, we go plus 16. So 32 bytes in is the beginning of inner radius. Now inner radius is a float, which should just be four bytes. So add on four bytes and that's where outer radius begins. Looks like there's about, yeah, like I said, about eight bytes of padding after outer radius because we need 48 bytes anyway. That is fine. So the next step is we've allocated this block, buff, block buffer. We then need to copy or declare some data, copy it in, and then send that to a uniform buffer. Okay, so we have declared a bunch of data and we have copied that over. Now, look, if we could get away with simply declaring um, block buffer as like an array of floats and just chucking our floats in there. But um, I'm going to go with this mem copy because potentially we could have a really weird um, memory layout. So I just want to make it as robust as possible. Ironically, it's complaining that we could get into trouble here. Hey, you know what? I really don't care. Take that C++. Okay, so now I want to create a uniform buffer object. Now, a uniform buffer object is very similar to a vertex buffer object, almost the same thing. So we'll have a uniform buffer object. Okay, so um, if you're not familiar with this slightly different approach, this is DSA, direct state access. It's more of a modern OpenGL thing. Um, so what we take in is the buffer, that's our uniform buffer object, the size, which is our block size, the data, which is 
that block buffer. And the flags, which is how we're gonna use this, we're gonna go GL dynamic storage. Okay, cool. So we send that over, then we delete the underlying uh, array because we don't need that stuff anymore. It's already shipped over. All right, now to use this, we go ahead, we set this up and we will just go uh, bind buffer range. And that takes our target, which is the uniform buffer. Our index, which is block index. Buffer will go with an offset of zero and block size. Because um, inside the uniform buffer object, everything has been set at the correct offset. So when we bind the uniform buffer object by default, we need to bind from the start of the, of the UBO. Okay, now I think we're almost done, but it's always good practice to delete this. So we'll go um, GL delete buffers. That's one. UBO. Let me just check I'm doing this properly. So I'll just check the quad mesh. Yep, delete buffers. So interestingly, we're now using exactly the same um, creation, named buffer, buffer storage and everything for um, both of these. Okay, so now the big reveal. And there we have it. Okay, so we have some outer radius, some inner radius, and we are kind of stepping between those colors and creating something. But as I'm sure you can see, it's not really about just creating a graphic. This is about how do we like jump into a shader after it's compiled, query information, and work with memory layouts and things. Anyway, hope you had fun with that. And yeah, that'll be it for now. See you in the next one. Bye.